Well, I think special teams is going to be the deciding factor in at least two games this season. That could be the deciding factor in the season. And it might start with the Penn State game. So we're going to look at the expectations, hopes, and fears for special teams this year. And before doing that, this is WVU football going deep. I am Forrest Poston, uh, teacher, talker, teaker, and cat dad. And you can hear Rockus in the background, perhaps, though he seems to be giving up for the moment. Now, and let me interrupt myself real quickly here because I forgot to say this originally. Please share, subscribe, click the thumbs up, click the notification bell, uh, make comments. I like positive comments, but I'll accept negative ones. <laughs> and then I'll go mope in the corner for a while uh, and tell your friends. Now back to the video. Thanks. Special teams. <laughs> That has been a common subject the last couple of years, not for the best of reasons. Now, actually, special teams have been pretty good most of the time. But when they have made mistakes, they have been big mistakes, <laughs> obviously. Returns for touchdowns, that sort of thing. <clears throat> Running into your own punt returner. Uh, some things that turn the tide of a game against West Virginia. Uh, didn't quite lose the Baylor game for us, but came darn close. And it was a big factor in the Oklahoma State game. That last quarter would not have played out the way it had otherwise. So, what can we expect this year? Well, I expect the good, the good things to continue. Uh, no, I mean, we're, we should be set at kicker and punter. No problems there. Hayes and Straw. Uh, straw will likely be better than ever. Keeping in mind that we're talking about a guy who came in fairly young with you know relatively little experience in American football punting and he has worked he has learned and he has grown uh, and he is healthy which he was not uh, last year really on the kickoff coverage <laughs> okay we got to be better that's, I mean, we just got to be better. I think multiple personnel issues have been resolved. And that includes a couple of players specifically who are no longer with the team, willingly or not. But it also means having better gunners, which goes back to that personnel question, uh, and also more of the mid-sized players who can run, uh, linebacker types. And we've got a crap load of linebackers in this class. I don't know how many of the freshmen will end up uh, playing on special teams, but they might. And we brought in several uh, walk-on linebackers who look rather good on tape. And a couple of guys there that I really like how they tackle. So we should measure up much better in that regard. Didn't talk a lot about kickoff returns last year. <laughs> That's kind of unfortunate because you'd like to be talking about how good they were. And we really haven't had that uh, since Winston Wright's the beginning of his last year. He had some top quality returns, and then things just kind of went, pfft, and I don't know why. How much was blocking, how much was right. Right left after that season, and I have not missed him since. But we have not had 
crisp blocking, and we haven't had anybody who really has that knack for kickoff returns. And almost every position on special teams requires a physical knack and a mental edge that leans towards being completely nuts. Of course, yeah. Owen Schmidt as a gunner type was a prime example, but returners need that touch of insanity too. Um, and, you know, I mean, a kickoff return specialist just has to be able to cut and go. And we've done a lot of fair catches when the kickoff wasn't necessarily that good. We've got guys back there now who can catch the ball. But we tried, I mean, we tried Jaheim White. I think Anderson got a shot. And we just didn't have anybody who popped. Now, the starters at the moment are Fox and Cl Hudson Clement. And you know, I'll talk about Fox more later. Clement, that's it's interesting. Uh, we don't think of him as fast or nifty as a runner, but he is. Uh, he was they estimated the second fastest wide receiver last year, uh, just a shade behind uh, Horton. And we have seen Clement break a number of long runs after catching a pass. He has that knack. Whether or not it converts uh, as a kick returner, don't know. Um, we could see White and Anderson back there again, but, I mean, Clay Ash, Judah Price, um, you know, one of the freshman running backs coming in now in scholarship, they're just getting here, uh, Hubbard and Dunbar. I would think Dunbar may be more likely of the two. <laughs> we have a crap load of speed in the freshman class. We've got Day Day Farmer, Keyshawn Robinson, Dom Collins, uh, Murphy Clement. But do you want a freshman on kickoff or punt return? I don't know. I wouldn't really expect one of these guys to win the spot at the beginning of the year. But by mid-year, you could see some changes unless, you know, one of these guys has already uh, established himself. I could see Hudson Clement uh, being a top returner. And we can risk him since the wide receiver room is so strong right now. Wouldn't really have wanted to do it last year. Uh, I mean, putting White back there was, was risky. But they were trying to find some way to make the kickoff returns pop. We, you know, we're giving up the touchdown returns. We need to score a few of them. Or at least get these nice 40, 50 yard returns. And we haven't been doing it. I do think we're going to do it this year. Just not sure who we're going to do it with. But I think the blocking will be better. Punting. Punt coverage, again, that was mostly good, and it's going to be the same thing as uh, kick returns. We just have to make sure we have good gunners and guys who maintain lane integrity. That is what cost us time and time again. Uh, now, I mean, you know, the recruiting has really focused on high IQ players. And I think we have weeded out a couple more of the type who are the go-for-it type more than really learning what they are supposed to do type. And it is you have to do your job. You can't cover somebody else's lane. Um, 
you do your job, trust them to do theirs, that takes care of things. And you don't go shooting for stats. Uh, that, I think, has been a problem with a couple of players. Not, not much lately, but a couple of years ago it was more of an issue. Um, punt return is another bit of an issue. And again, blocking on punt returns has not been good enough. Period. Flat out period. No. Uh, even Beanie Bishop's return in the bowl game wasn't so much blocking. He had to go a long way to find and create that lane. Uh, we have to get sharper on that. We cannot have coverage guys down there before the ball. Now, uh, Preston Fox, as a punt returner, is good. He's above average. He will catch the ball. He's not going to drop very many. Love the video where he caught four balls uh, holding on to each one. Now, the last one he caught, he had, you know, two tucked under his right arm, one between his legs, and caught the fourth one with his left arm. <laughs> He's got a knack. Um, you know, say, I mean, we knew it as a receiver. It works as a punt returner. That doesn't always happen, especially because... Punters have gotten so oh, freaky good about different kinds of spins. Uh, it takes a lot more to be a punt returner now than it did 10, 15 years ago. Uh, Fox will give you a good average on the returns. And he will break a 15, 20 even a good 30-yard return from time to time, even you know, even if the blocking is only fair. I don't think he's a guy you expect to take it to the house. And ideally, I mean, the two things you want from a punt returner are, one, catch the ball, and two, that possibility that he could take it to the house on any given return. We don't have any experienced players right now that we could say that about. Some of the freshmen coming in have done kick and punt returns in high school. Will we put a freshman back there this year well, of course, that's going to depend on what happens in camp and pr the rest of the practices. I do not see it happening for Penn State. I don't think you want to put a freshman under that kind of pressure, first game of the season, Penn State at home. Uh, there are players who would still thrive on it. Maybe one of these guys is like that. If they find that out, Maybe they'll give it a try. Obviously, Farmer is one who comes to mind. Gallagher could turn into, I mean, he's got the nifty moves that a punt returner needs, particularly to make the first one or two guys miss. Um, I mean, he's mentally tough. That doesn't always translate into punt returner. He is Number two on the depth chart right now. Um, and it would be nice to see him step up. I would expect him to take it over sooner than Farmer. Just that, I mean, you know, the one year difference is a big difference. Um, but we have Fox. If Fox stays the number one punt returner the entire season, we will do well. He might take one to the house if the blocking is good enough. Uh, I have no objection to Preston Fox returning kicks and punts. Uh, he is one of my favorite players on the team. Now, something 
that I think might be the difference maker in terms of whether or not special teams is a positive difference maker. And it has not gotten talked about. I, I am hoping the media will bring this up uh, in the early interviews for fall camp. Uh, and of course, I mean, you know, it hasn't been a big story factor because they didn't do a lot with special teams in spring camp. They are sa- they were saving that for fall camp, so it should be a big part of fall camp. But this spring, West Virginia hired an analyst consultant who will be focusing on special teams, and it is a specialty of his, and that's uh, Chris Herring, who was a linebacker at WVU, most recently was at Wisconsin as a coach, and we don't, we just haven't heard anything. Do they have specific expectations? Has he played a significant role already? (laughs) I don't know. And it kind of bugs me. It just seems like such a potentially big deal. And it's sitting back there in the shadows, unseen, unspoken. Uh, (laughs) There is one picture Uh, of him on the media back in April. And he's just, I guess, going about his job. Now, and I mean, Jeff Coons is a good coach. The issue on special teams has consistently been personnel, just as it has been for the team overall. Uh, Personnel in terms of the right bodies for the jobs and in terms of the right psychology, mentality, personality, culture for the team. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you only have so many people who fit the physical type you need and they won't play their assigned role, I mean, you can't fire them and just hire a new player. That's not the way college football works. But over time, that is kind of what happens. Uh, And I think we have the guys now who will do the job. They will take the coaching. Great coaching can't make a difference if the players won't take it. I think we have guys who will. Um... Still a few guys on there on the team who, I mean, Jalen Anderson, I don't think has ever quite come around. Now, word is that he's better this year. I'll need to be convinced that the light has really gone on and he understands fully, truly, deeply to the core what it takes and has made that commitment. We'd love to see it. I mean, he should be a great player right now, and he hasn't been. <laughs> and he's going to have to prove it before he gets any, you know, any real time on the field, but it'd be nice to see. But I think we do have the personnel we need. I think we have the coaches we need. So, I mean, coverage, coverage is going to be better. Um, I think there's a good chance nobody takes any kick to the house, kickoff or punt. I'm not going to guarantee that, but I think we may see a season when it doesn't happen. That would be a very, very good thing. And I do think... Even more than punts, I want to see a kickoff to the house by us, not on us. Um, But we need somebody who will be that kick return guy. More, I mean, people talk about needing the uh, alpha 
receiver, the number one go-to guy. We don't need that, no. Uh, receivers, I like the idea of a lot of above-average receivers, so nobody knows who it's going to. Kickoff return, I mean, you got two guys back there, and generally one of them is the guy who's going to take the ball if possible. So you do need that one guy who has the kickoff it factor. Um, speed is part of it, but it is in some ways something undefinable. Some guys can do it exceptionally well. Most can't, no matter how fast they are. So will we find that guy this year? We got a lot of guys to give a shot to. And I think somebody will do it well before the end of the season. I just don't know if we will have that guy by the Penn State game. But I do think we are going to see some very good special teams by West Virginia in the Penn State game. We're going to see the difference that you get with the right personnel. And maybe we're going to see some difference uh, having Chris Herring as the consultant. Whether or not we will know that it was his doing, eh, maybe somebody will ask uh, Coach Coons or Coach Brown about it. Hint, hint, media guys, get on it. There are people out here who want to know. All right, that's kind of long for special teams, but then again, there are a number of different special teams. So I hope you hung around. And uh, <laughs> oh, during my opening spiel, I forgot to say, uh, please share, subscribe, click the thumbs up, click the notification bell, uh, <laughs> make comments and tell your friends. So now I will have to, let me film something here real quick that I can cut into that. Meanwhile, I'll see you later. So long.